Hey, and welcome back. We are doing the second part in a series of significant figures. You may be ready to jump in just now and learn the rules for sig figs in terms of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. That's what this lesson's about. And so doing calculations with sig figs, I have done a screencast on what numbers are considered to be significant over here. I'll put a link in the upper right if you want to take a look at that. And so that's the background of where we have been and where we're going right now in the lesson. But I do want to start off by asking you a question. Have you ever gotten an answer from a calculation and it looks something like this? Almost certainly you have. You've done a calculation. Notice that you can get numbers with many digits to the right of the decimal place. And that's what I have shown here. And the follow-up question I have is essentially would this be a problem? If you were to report this as your answer, let's say you're just measuring the area of a piece of paper or something like that, but for some reason you need to be very certain about the size of that piece of paper. Could you be very certain about this number over here? And the answer is no, probably not. The reason for that is we don't have that precise of uh, measuring devices usually that we're dealing with, depending on what we're dealing with in terms of the numbers, right? But for the most part, we need to keep track of the imprecision of our devices because as this continues on in science and engineering, sometimes people's lives actually depend on calculations and doing calculations correctly or the design that's used for a product that maybe you'll work for a company in the future. You'll need to design a product and your calculations need to be dependable. And so this is an idea about how to think about how to do these things correctly. All right, and so let's take a look at the rules for sig figs and for calculating sig figs. Okay, and I want to start with the general rule. The general rule is up here. An answer in a calculation cannot be more precise than the measurements that went into calculating that answer. So it suddenly cannot be just miraculously more precise than the numbers that went into it, even though a calculator will kind of do that to you sometimes where you get a long string of numbers to the right of the decimal place. We cannot report that and be confident of that. So we need to keep track of the imprecision and our confidence in our numbers and reporting and working with and calculating with good numbers. That's the reason why we're going to be doing this. So the first rule is addition or subtraction. So the rule is the final answer should have the same number of decimal places to the right of the decimal place as the least precise number that's being added. So if you take a look at our example on the right over here, you can see that we've got two numbers. We're adding them together. And I want you to focus on how many digits there are to the right of the decimal place. So the top number has two. It's down to the hundreds. The bottom number has one. It's down to the tenths. So our answer cannot be more precise than either of the two numbers that went into that calculation. So our answer should be down to, what do you think, down to the tenths or the hundredths? All right, first, let me show you what we get from our calculator answer. That's our calculator answer, but our final answer should be rounded off to the tenths. And that's because our answer cannot be more precise. You cannot have a hundredths over here because we have a tenths here. So our answer cannot be more precise than the numbers that went into calculating that answer if we are going to be respecting sig figs and confident that the numbers we're working with and sending off to other people or reporting are good numbers. Otherwise, if we answer kind of like we would on a calculator with a long string of numbers to the right of the decimal place, we can do that, but we can mislead people if we do that incorrectly. All right, let's see what happens with multiplication and division. The rule for multiplication and division is the final answer should have the same number of sig figs as the measurement or number going into the calculation with the least number of sig figs. Again, the principle is our answer cannot be more precise than the numbers that went into that calculation. So in this case, we're not worrying about how many numbers we have to the right of the decimal place at all. We're just worrying about how many sig figs we have with each of the numbers that we are multiplying together. So on the left, we have three. On the right, we have four sig figs. So between three sig figs and four sig figs, which is our least precise value? Well, our least precise value is three sig figs. We have one measurement down to three sig figs, one down to four. So our answer can only be in three sig figs. So the calculator answer would look something like this. And we would round that off to three sig figs, so our final answer would look like this. That is how you're going to do multiplication division type problems. Let's combine them into a multi-step problem. 
All right, and so here is the multi-step problem that I've created. I've got 4.44 plus this number up here in parentheses divided by this over here. So you want to consider order of operations. We're going to need to take care of the parentheses addition first. And so I want you to think about what that rule is and what we have to be careful of. You might even want to pause this at this point and see if you can work out the entire problem. If you have a piece of paper and a calculator handy and want to test yourself to see if you know it at this point, or just follow along, either way is fine. But if you're feeling ambitious, please pause right now. All right, so let's continue. We would say this is going to be measured down to the hundreds place. This is measured down to the tenths place. So our answer cannot be more precise than the measurements that went into that calculation. So for this addition calculation up top, what do you think we're going to be rounding off to? First of all, the calculator answer is up here. And we're going to need to round off to the tenths because that is going to be the least precise value between tenths and hundredths. The least precise value that went into the calculation is what we have to stick with because we're confident with that number up here. The next part of the problem is a division problem. So I want you to think about what the rule is and how this is going to be applied. Okay, so in this case, remember, we don't need to worry about how many places we have to the right of the decimal place. Like it's not tenths and thousandths over here that we're comparing. We're just simply comparing the number of sig figs in total that are up top in the numerator and down below in the denominator. And in this case, we've got five sig figs up top, six sig figs down below. And so our answer should have how many sig figs? This is our calculator answer over here. Our answer should have the least amounts, the least precise value. So between five and six, the least precise value would be five. And so we should round it off like this and end up with an answer of 4.4500. Now, if you're looking at this and wondering, hey, why can't we just write 4.45? I have two answers to that question. The first answer is the direct one. The first answer is because this shows that we have measured this down to four places past the decimal place. We are that confident of our calculation and our numbers over here that you can take this to the bank, you can make your products, you can do whatever you need to do. You can pass this off to a lab partner and be confident that that number is good. So that's the first answer. The second answer is if you don't quite get that at this point, you might want to go back and take a look at my previous screencast on this topic to understand why these zeros at the end need to be in this number right here. So I hope that's been helpful. Thank you for listening. I will be doing more screencasts on other topics in the sciences as well. Thank you for listening and have a great day.